This is going to be about the rebellious spirit of women pastors. And just from the title of this, it's already made some people squirm and flinch in their seat. But there's a great spirit of rebellion in the churches. And one of the ways that that is so out in the open is when you consider the women pastors and the effeminate men who are okay with it. If you're a woman pastor or you approve of this, then you are openly going against what the Bible says. Now, if you're just ignorant of what the Bible says about it, and maybe you're a woman pastor or have a woman pastor and you're just ignorant of it, that's one thing. But if you have read the verses that plainly, plainly, very plainly go against women pastors and you're still in favor of it, you're obviously just dead set in your ways and you're rebelling. And after showing scriptural evidence against a woman pastor, you will many times get the answer, well, I just feel like the Lord calls women to be pastors or something like that. But that's leaning to your own understanding of things. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Someone may say, well, I just know in my heart that women should be pastors. But remember, we shouldn't follow our heart. You should follow the scripture. In Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Someone may say, well, in my eyes, a woman can teach and preach better than a man. Well, Proverbs twelve fifteen: The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. You see, it may be right in your eyes, but we're not concerned with what's right in your eyes. We're not concerned with your opinion. We're not concerned with your experience in something. We're not concerned with how you know a woman that's really smart and a good speaker and is a better preacher than this other guy we're concerned with what does the bible actually say about it you should really quit going by feelings and go by the simple facts of scripture just because a woman is a good speaker is really smart looks good on stage has a great delivery and anything else you can add to that that doesn't change the fact that the bible itself said Women have no place pastoring, being a deacon, having authority over men, teaching men. It's clear as a bell in the Bible. It isn't one of those gray areas. It isn't something you can disagree or you can agree to disagree on. It's one of those things that's so clear that if you deny it, you're denying Scripture and being a rebel. And... I talk to people about this a lot. You'd be surprised that the people that are okay with women pastors. And just for me quoting the verse in 1 Timothy 2.12, where Paul said, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. I, quoted, I, just, I kept quoting that to a, a guy the other day about what does he do with that verse. And he said, he just went crazy. He said, man, I hate when you say that. And all I was doing was quoting the verse. It was like I was poking him with a, the sharp end of a sharp two-edged sword or something. But he was getting mad just for me saying the verse in a calm voice. Because we're living in such a time to where that is offensive to people. Because they've been brainwashed into thinking, if you're saying something like that, that you believe... Men are better than women. And all the, all the male chauvinist stuff they talk about. But that's... Are you accusing God of being that? Or being unfair? God is the one that made the rules. We're supposed to follow the rules whether you like them or not. And if you don't want to follow the rules, what are you? You are a rebel. And all you care about is you and yourself and your feelings. 
and you do not care about God and God's feelings and how he feels. And that's the big problem with this. The big problem is that these people that's claiming to be a woman pastor and the effeminate men that support the woman women pastoring, they do not care about God, they don't care about what God said, and they don't care about God's feelings on it when they get right down to it. So let's really dive into it and look at it. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, look at 1 Timothy chapter 2 in the context of the husband and wife relationship. It says, in 1 Timothy 2.11, it says, Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. And just me saying that offends people. All I did was quote the verse. But just me saying that, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. And it, even me, I've been brainwashed a little bit because that sounds rough to me. I feel like, man, that sounds rough. That's going to really ruffle somebody's feathers, just me saying that. That's because even my brain has been taught to think a certain way. And probably when somebody read that 200 years ago, um, it, it, would, it would have done nothing. It was just common, plain, ordinary basic Bible truth. But if you're a Bible believer, you say amen to that. Amen, that means so be it. That's, that's right, that's true. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. If the woman is supposed to learn in silence, then how can she be preaching to men in a church stop setting? Now, keep your hand in 1 Timothy 2, 11, but look at also at 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14, 31. Now, this is in the context of prophesying and speaking in tongues in like a church-type setting. It says, For you may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the, now look at this, for those who want to say, well, this was just to the church of Corinth because they were a carnal church, or to this, this certain culture, look at what it says. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. And if you go back and uh, read in, at the beginning of 1 Corinthians, the letter's not just addressed to the Corinthians. It says, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, in 1 Corinthians 1, 2, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. This letter is not just to the Corinthians. It's to us too. And God's not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Look what he says. Let your women keep silence in the churches. 1 Corinthians 14, 34. For it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And when we are so brainwashed in the age we're in, that sounds very rough. But that's what the Bible says. That's what God says. And you have to trust God that he's right in that and that you're wrong and that he knows better than you. The Almighty God who put the stars and the sun and the moon and hang them up there and keep them from falling said that, and you would be, do good to just go right in line with it. So it said, Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it's not permitted unto them to speak. So for a woman, Joyce Meyer, Paula White, Beth Moore, all those other pe other ones, for a woman to have the nerve to get up and preach against such clear verses or to just not even acknowledge such clear verses, it shows she is in complete rebellion and any man that supports her is in complete rebellion. Trust me, any woman who would deny these clear verses of Scripture or twist them around to make them say something else 
she could care less about the word of God. She doesn't care what God said. The words are not precious to her. She would change the word of God without batting an eye. They aren't, she's not concerned with what the Lord wants. She's concerned with how she feels. How she feels. What does she think? What does she want? She could care less about the word of God. Why do you think pretty much any woman pastor is a Bible corrector? I don't think I know of any woman pastor that's not a Bible corrector. I don't know of any King James Bible believing woman pastor. Do you? They all change the scripture. They'll change the scripture without batting an eye. And if and if she doesn't care about the Word of God, how is her people going to care about the Word of God? So 1 Timothy 2.12, here's the verse that, well, just for me quoting it, it's like I took the sharp two-edged sword and poked a guy in the rear with it. You should have seen him. He, he loudly exclaimed, I hate when you say this. I hate when you say that. I'm like, all I was doing was quoting the verse and asking you, what do you do with the verse? What do you do if you're a woman pastor or you are in support of a woman pastor? What do you do with this verse? 1 Timothy 2.12, Paul says, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So, how, tell me, how could God how could God's roles in marriage with the man as the spiritual leader of the home, how could God role, his roles that he's given us in marriage be kept faithfully if the man has his wife for his pastor or if a man has somebody else's wife for a pastor? If your wife isn't supposed to teach and have authority over you in spiritual matters, why would somebody else's wife be teaching and having authority over you? How is God's given roles for marriage kept if your wife is the pastor? And this wasn't just they're going to a lot of people say, "Well, that's just that was just for their culture back then was when Paul was telling this to Timothy." This wasn't just for the culture at the time of Paul writing this because Look at the context of it. Look at the verses after it. He takes it all the way back to Adam and Eve in the next couple of verses. He says in 1 Timothy 2, 13 and 14, For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The woman is more easily deceived than the man. That's just how it is. Why is it that way? I don't know. That's just... That's just how it's set up. And maybe it also has to do with the curse on the woman as well. But this is why the devil went after Eve first. In 2 Corinthians eleven two through 3, he said, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband. You see, me and you saved, we're born again, we're in the body of Christ, which is the bride of Christ. Keep that in mind. He says, For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Eve was the one that was deceived. Adam just sinned because he was low down. But Eve was deceived. And that's the same thing today. When it comes to men... Mostly, they're just wicked and stupid jerks because they're low down. But the woman is deceived. She's the one that gets the most deceived. Now, I'm not saying men don't get deceived, but the woman is more susceptible to deception according to the Bible. Not according to my way of thinking, but according to what the Bible actually says. So as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, he said, beguiled Eve through his subtlety. Now look at 1 Corinthians eleven eight through 10. It says, For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. You see that? Isn't that? It's backwards now, though. 
from what people have been brainwashed to think. It's like you're brainwashed to think at an early age that you, to, when you find a woman, you are to bow down to her. And she's supposed to rule over you. And you have to basically uh, go on just like a suicide mission to keep her happy, to keep her pleased, and to earn her affection and love. From the from a child all the way up till now, from the movies, that's what you've been brainwashed to think. That's the way the movies went. When I was a big time movie watcher as a lost person, you would have a movie where a guy is just going all out to win over the affection of a woman. And it's like the man was made for the woman in those movies, but actually it was a woman for the man. And then he says in 1 Corinthians 11.10, For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. The power on her head is her father, and then after that, her husband. And the woman, because if the woman doesn't have power on her head, she's in danger of those evil angels. Power on her head because of the angels. The woman is in danger of evil angels that can deceive her. Just like Satan the anointed cherub deceived her. Just like an unclean spirit can deceive her. Just as the devil himself transforms into an angel of light. He, he's not an angel. He's the anointed cherub, but he transforms into an angel of light. As the weaker vessel, the woman is in greater danger of being deceived as Eve was. So if a woman is easier to deceive, and you have a woman pastor, you're more likely to be deceived. And Isaiah 3.12, it says, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. Look at that. They had children and women ruling over them, and the people that led them caused them to err. You see the pattern? And destroyed the way of their paths. What happened when you had Queen Jezebel as queen next to King Ahab? She led him down a more evil path than he already was on. She led to him having Naboth killed. Uh, what about Queen Athaliah when she was queen? Took over for a little bit. Remember how evil she was and I'm not saying women are evil I'm just saying it's wrong to have the women ruling over men it doesn't make any sense according to the Bible and if you think I'm saying that men are better than women or women are less of people then you've just gone along with the brainwash of this age and you're not a Bible believer and just like the Bible says in Amos, how can two walk together except they be agreed? How can you say you're walking with God when these when you don't even agree with these verses at all? And when another thing, when Paul lays out the qualifications for a pastor and deacon, he's real clear it's supposed to be a man. And to say otherwise, you just got to deny the whole thing. And you're not a Bible believer. You have a rebellious spirit if you deny these verses. In 1 Timothy 3, 1, it says, This is a true saying. If a man, right out of the gate, and you say, well, that's just, it doesn't just mean men there. It's just, you know, like it says, mankind, and it's talking about woman and the man. Okay, well, let's keep going then. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. So it says, if a man desires the office, and you say, well, that could be talking about men and women. It, it, but it can't just mean everybody in general because verse 2 said, husband of one wife. How can a woman be a husband and a, hu a husband of one wife? That has to be a man. Then it says, not given to wine. No striker, not greedy of filthy luger, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. Now, 
This one will get you. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. You still think it can be a man and a woman? That doesn't make any sense. It said one that ruleth well his own house. One of the characteristics that Paul says you need to look for in a pastor is one that ruleth well his own house. Not only does it say his, but only the man is supposed to rule the house. If Paul is okay with a woman pastor, then why is another one of the characteristics that you should look for is that he rules well his own house. The woman isn't supposed to rule the house at all. That wouldn't even make sense to have this as a characteristic for a pastor if it was okay for a woman to pastor. The woman's not supposed to rule the house. The man is supposed to rule the house. <clears throat> Genesis 3.16. It's been, God had it like this from the get-go. Genesis 3.16. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee how could a man be ruler of his house but his wife is his pastor and ruling over him and feeding him guiding him spiritually how does that make sense and you say well well i know more bible than my husband and he's not into the bible and he doesn't know anything about god that's that's irrelevant. That's besides the point. Look, you're, you can't just take your circumstances and use your circumstances and how you feel and the way your heart feels about it to override the facts of the Scripture. And see, what that, that's what another thing this all goes back to. It's more of a woman thing to go about how you feel and your emotion on a thing than the facts of the Scriptures themselves. And when you talk to like charismatics and stuff, even the men, what are they saying? Well, I just always felt. I just always thought. I just know in my heart. All this stuff. That's what. That's the way that they talk when you talk to them at work. They always, it's never, well, the Bible says this. That's what it sounds when you talk to a Bible believer, a Bible believing man or Bible believing woman. When you talk to them, they say, well, that's what, that's what the Bible says. That's what. Paul said here. That's what the scripture said here. You contrast that. And I talk to a lot of people. I train like so many people. I work with like 80 people just on this job that I've had right now just in four years. And I talk to all different types of people from different denominations. And you can tell by how they talk. You talk to a charismatic who are big on women pastors. It's all about how they feel, what they thought in their heart. I've just always believed well, I just think that it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter how you feel. It's about what does the Bible say? Because you know what? We as people, we're, all, we're so in our flesh, we're constantly being tossed to and fro. One day we feel this way. Another day we feel that way. One day we'll think this. Then another day our emotions can lead us to think something else. And if that is what you're leaning on, then you're never going to have a final authority. And that's what this all goes back to. These people don't want a final authority. They want to go by how they feel. How, can a, how could a man be ruler of his house? How could you rule your house and you are driving your woman pastor, that's your wife, to church as she's getting up there and telling you how you should live? She's getting up there and teaching you you, the Bible, are you that lazy and that and that sorry that you don't know more Bible than your wife or aren't giving an effort to know more Bible than your wife so that you can be the spiritual leader of your home? In 1 Timothy 5, 17, uh, and this shows you here, that the pastor does have rule and authority. In 1 Timothy 17, it says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. So you see the elder or the pastor, he has rule. 
in Hebrews 13, 17, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. So if your wife's the pastor, she's ruling over you and you have to submit to her as the pastor. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. So if you're a man and you're so effeminate that you have a woman pastor that's your wife, that'd be even worse if it was your wife and you're, you're okay with that after all these verses that I've presented to you. You are in straight rebellion against God and against the scriptures. And how you answer that question, how can a woman be your pastor and you be the spiritual leader and having rule in your home? Well, this says the pastor has the rule over you and you're supposed to submit yourselves to the pastor. That, that's a contradiction. You got the Bible backwards. And what does Satan love? He loves backwards stuff. And the spirit of this age is, to, is wanting to make men more effeminate and women the masculine leader. That's why, what, you, what do you see in movies? Just in the past 15 years or so, what would you see? The woman is the hero now. The, her husband's tied up. She's got to go untie her husband, save him from the bad guys. Right? But when I was growing up, you had the man always coming through to save the woman in the end. Just like the Bible picture. Jesus Christ comes back, raptures out the church, saved his bride. Jesus Christ comes back at the second coming, saves Israel, from the Antichrist. You see that? The, the man comes to save the woman. It says, for they watch for your souls. So your wife is watching for your soul? Are you, are you the man of the relationship or the woman? My, my wife shouldn't have to watch for my soul. I should be watching for her soul. See that You see how the whole thing's just backwards. The devil wants it backwards. He wants it to be, instead of it, the the role, roles being God, then the man, then the woman, then the children. The devil wants it children, then the woman, then the man, then God. He wants it to be in that way. He wants God at the bottom. He wants everything completely backwards. Now, 1 Timothy 3, 5. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Notice that every single verse in 1 Timothy 3, when it's given the characteristics for a pastor, it said man, it said his, it said husband, and it said a man over and over. But yet you're saying Paul's okay with a woman pastor. It said, for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? How can a woman properly take care of the church of God when she isn't even supposed to rule her own house? You see how that doesn't make any sense? For if a man not know how to rule his own house, how, how does a woman supposed to know how to rule her own house when God said the man's supposed to rule it? And it says if a, you know, if a pastor doesn't know how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Why is a woman having to take care of a bunch of men? And if the men are okay with that, they're definitely got some effeminate traits. A woman pastor or ruler in her home ruins the picture of Christ and his bride. That's another reason. That it's so messed up, it ruins the picture. In Ephesians 5, 22 through 24, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. How's that if his wife is the pastor? Or if somebody else's wife is his pastor? 
For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. So just like Jesus Christ is over the bride, the man <clears throat> in the relationship should be the ruler of the home. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And if you have such a rebellious spirit that you're going to get up and act like it's okay for you to have authority over your husband and all these other men in a church, you're ruining the picture. What do you do with these verses? How would a woman pastoring her husband stay true to the picture of Christ and the church, his bride? It says in Ephesians 5.25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Christ, the man Christ Jesus, God manifest in the flesh, he gave himself for his bride. He was the man. He is the man of the relationship. You need to be the man of the relationship if you're a man. Quit listening to a woman pastor. Doesn't make any sense. She shouldn't be watching for your soul. You should be watching for her soul. A preachy woman is about the biggest turnoff for a husband as there could possibly be. If he is, if he is any red, any type of red-blooded man, that is the biggest turnoff for a husband. Is a preachy wife running her mouth. If you're trying to win over your lost husband. Preaching at him isn't going to help the average male unless he's got them effeminate traits. Unless he's got as many, uh, unless he is as effeminate as you are masculine trying to be a preacher. Look what Peter says wins a man over. In second, in 1 Peter 3, 1 through 4, it says, Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. If he won't listen to the word and, and believe it and get saved, he can be won over by the conversation of the wives. And that's just not what she says. That's how she lives her life in front of him. It says, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair, and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So you're supposed to have a meek and quiet spirit as a woman. Any man who's okay with, a, with his wife getting up and yelling at him and telling him what to do behind a pulpit does not care a bit about what God said. She's supposed to have a meek and quiet spirit. Does that match a woman that's going to get up behind a pulpit, stick her finger in your face, and yell at you and tell you what the Bible says? <clears throat> I think God's more displeased with you by letting that happen than he is with the woman doing it. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 4 2, he said, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So that's if that's the preacher's job and you got a woman getting up doing that, reproving and rebuking her husband, first off, why is she having to reprove and rebuke you? And how does that even match with all the scriptures we've, we've just g gave? Your wife is up there reproving and rebuking you? Do you think it's okay for a woman to get up and reprove and rebuke you with authority when you're supposed to be the head spiritually, giving the example to her spiritually, being the one teaching her? That's exactly what these women pastors want to do is be in authority because you know why? They despise authority. They resent the verses I've given you. They can't handle that a man is to be the head of the house. And what you have today in this age is the spirit of rebellion. They hate authority in all walks of life. They hate authority from the time they open their eyes to the time they close their eyes. Any authority figures around, they don't like it. You need to face the facts that no matter who you are, 
man or woman, you're going to have an authority figure. Most of my day consists of being under somebody else. When I wake up my eyes, I'm under the Lord Jesus Christ, first and foremost, obviously. But every day I go to work where I have authority figures over me. I have supervisors. I have team leaders. I have managers. I have all these office people that are over me. They have people over them. It's just there's always somebody over somebody. Then you got experienced veteran workers that's been there so much longer that it's like they're over you. They're all telling me what to do. Pretty much all day long, I have to do what somebody else says. And you know what I do? I just do what they say. Those are my authority figures. God puts authority figures in your life. When I leave work, I'm still under somebody else. There's police officers on the road. And I'm supposed to do what they say. If they tell me to pull over, I'm supposed to pull over. They tell me to get out of the car, I'm supposed to get out of the car. No matter where you go, you got authority figures in your life. But you're living in a time when people absolutely cannot handle authority. They won't submit to a supervisor. So you know what? They won't work. They won't submit to Jesus Christ. So you know what? They live like the devil. They won't acknowledge that there is one pure Bible in, in the, for the English-speaking people that is to be authoritative to them. So what do they do? They want to use multiple versions and correct the scriptures with the Greek. That way they become the final authority over the scriptures. They won't submit to a husband because the devil tells them they're being a doormat. So they want to be the authority in the relationship. And, you know, you got people, they don't want to have a police officer with authority over them. So what do they want to do? They want to defund the police. You see that spirit, the spirit of disobedience, just like Paul talked about in Ephesians, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in all the children of disobedience. And if you cannot go by these simple, clear, child-like verses, it's so easy a child could understand, then you are in complete rebellion against the scriptures. If you are a woman pastor, or if you are in support of woman pastors, you really need to humble yourself and pray to God that he will fix your rebellious and stubborn heart. If you could still say that it, this is okay after seeing all these clear verses. 1 Samuel 15, 23 says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. That's what Samuel said. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. A woman pastor is in rebellion. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. So are Joyce Meyer, Paula White, and Beth Moore acting like godly women? Or are they acting like the Sanderson sisters? They don't care about the Word of God. The way they handle the Word of God, it just seems like they think it's just a bunch of hocus pocus or something. That it's, we'll go buy some of it. But all this other stuff, we'll throw it out. I mean, if they can't even go by these clear verses, do you really think they care about the Word of God? They do not care. In Revelation 2, 20 through 22, it says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed on the idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that committed adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. So you see, this woman Jezebel calleth herself a prophetess. And she's teaching and seducing people to sin. You can... And see, he gave her space to repent. You can also repent of your rebellion and your stubbornness 
and go along with the roles that God's laid out. But most likely you're not going to. You're just like Jezebel here. You got that Jezebel rebellious spirit. You can't stand the authority of a King James Bible. You can't stand that a man's supposed to have the authority in the relationship. You want to be the final authority. And you want to use all these little excuses to get, get out of that, being under that authority. Why do you think Joyce Meyer professes to get new revelations from God? Because she doesn't appreciate the ones laid out in the 66 books that we have. Why do you think Madame Blavatsky and Mary Baker Eddy and Ellen G. White, you know, Ellen G. White from the Seventh-day Adventist, Mary Baker Eddy, Christian Science, all these cults, a lot of these cults started by women, or even Oprah Winfrey, who tries to say some spiritual stuff sometimes, but it's always just, completely against the scriptures why do you think they come up with this stuff they don't care about what god said it's about how they feel it's about them wanting to be authority and first timothy 4 7 it says but refuse profane and old wives fables and exercise thyself rather into godliness refuse joyce meyer's profane and old wives fables it isn't about women being worse than men this has nothing to do with it. That's what the devil and all these ungodly people are saying to get you to to walk with them in their rebellion against God. It has nothing to do with that. Just like, what if I said, what if I said, uh, I'm upset, I, I really wanted to have a baby. Why can't I have a baby? Well, because God made it to where the woman has the child why why would you why would i go against that that's the way god set it up just like god set it up for the man to be the head of the house for the man to be the pastor it isn't about women being worse than men women can teach children uh, a, a woman can teach a, a male child a male child doesn't have any business teaching men my three-year-old son wouldn't have any business pastoring or, or teaching a class. The women can teach children. See, in Ephesians 6, 1, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. You see that? Children, obey your parents. Not just the dad, but the mom too. Does that mean that we're better than the children? No, it's that God set it up. That's the way the roles are. There has to be authority. And back there in Isaiah 3, what did you have? You had the children were the oppressors. The babes were ruling over them. The women were ruling over them. God's given us the roles that there has to be these roles, these lines of authority. And if you don't go by them, you end up in a mess. But see, the women can teach the children. The women can teach the women. Titus 2, 3 through 4, that aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. See, you can be a teacher and be a woman, but it has to be children and women, see, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. And if you're teaching them that they can pastor their husband, you're not teaching them to love their husbands. You're teaching them to be a big rebel like you are. And in uh, modern Bible versions, it's uh, catered to women having these lead leadership type roles like a pastor and or even a deacon. A, Paul's clear that the man's supposed to be a deacon as well, and in modern Bible versions, it'll call Phoebe a deaconess. And people's going to use that to say, well, see, women can have that type of role. But your King James Bible is clear, it calls Phoebe a servant, not a deacon. Making her a deacon wouldn't line up with 1 Timothy 3, how the deacon is supposed to be husband of one wife, calls him a man, calls him him. Many try to say that since Mary Magdalene was the first to give out the good news of Jesus Christ after his resurrection, they say, well, this means that women 
should be preachers of the gospel. But when it comes to giving out the gospel, this is the job of every Christian, man or woman. And, you know, you as a woman going out and giving the gospel out to people, that doesn't have anything to do with a woman being a pastor or you having authority over believing men in the church. Just because you can't pastor, just because you can't get up and preach to a bunch of Bible-believing men in the church doesn't mean you can't talk about the Bible. It doesn't mean you can't witness to people. It doesn't mean you can't talk about the Bible at all or nothing. That's just what the devil says, all these stupid little arguments like that. There are prophetesses in Scripture, like Deborah in Judges 4 and verse 4, like Huldah the prophetess in 2 Kings twenty two fourteen. But that's not a pastor. That's not a pastor. That's, this is just little stupid excuses and things people say to, to override all these clear verses. It isn't that the woman can't speak the words of God. It's that position of authority and, ru and the rule that the pastor has and teaching men in the church. That's what's backwards is when a woman tries to take on that job that God obviously has for men only. But if you can listen to all these clear verses and you still come to the conclusion that you as a woman pastor is okay or that you as a man, you still are okay with women pastors, you do not care about what God said at all. And you are in rebellion to that and you need to pray to God that he will fix your rebellious heart. Now, we're all rebellious in some way. I'm rebellious in ways. But uh, I'm not, when I am come to a verse so clear, I'm not going to say that I'm right and the Bible's wrong. That's basically what you're saying, that you're right and your feelings are going to determine how you live your life and they're going to override these clear verses of Scripture. That is being a true rebel at heart and you're in rough shape. So you need to tell God that you're sorry and say that I'm going to quit being a woman pastor or I'm going to quit supporting women pastors.